Okay, so. Uh, okay. Uh, just a bit of my background. Uh, I'm an Irish exchange student. I'm in Purdue for the fall semester, and I grew up in a dairy farm in, Ar dairy farm in Ireland. Um, so most of the dairy farms in Ireland are on a grass-based system, which means cows spend around nine months of the year outside grazing grass. Um, our cows, originally we had Holstein Frisian cows, but over the last few years we decided to start crossbreeding with Jersey. Uh, this is to improve milk, solids, health and fertility of the herd. Uh, the Irish system is very similar to the one in New Zealand, but just on a smaller scale. Just a picture of my farm there, it's quite green. Um, so this system is kind of made possible by Ireland's temperate climate. Uh, grass is an extremely cheap feed source and relatively easy to manage. Uh, this does, however, make it harder to control vitamin and mineral, mineral consumption on the farm. So, my point is about grass tetany. Uh, grass tetany affects ruminants and is a common problem in the Irish dairy industry. Uh, grass tetany is also known as hypomagnesemia. Uh, it's a metabolic disease. It's caused by a deficiency of magnesium in the blood. It's most common during springtime. Uh, this is due to fast growing grass which lacks magnesium. Mostly larger cows which are affected. Uh, since we started crossbreeding, uh, we still have a few Holstein Frisians and they're more susceptible to it. Um, it's also a disease commonly associated with stress. Uh, there's a few t different types of stress can induce it. Uh, cows in heat. So when a uh, cow is in heat, she's not eating and she's exerting a lot of her energy. So uh, this causes her to be stressed. And then bad weather conditions. Changes in diet and pasture and transport can also cause stress. So symptoms of grass tetany. Uh, once a cow begins suffering, it does not take long for the symptoms to become clear. Uh, the symptoms of tetany include uh, decreased milk production, lack of appetite, standing away from the herd, muscle twitching, staring, incoordination, uh, coma and death. Uh, normally if you find a cow grass tetany in the field, she'll be lying down with her head arched backwards, like in the picture there. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of the time you find a cow with tetany, she's already dead, so it's quite hard to catch it. Uh, so prevention is the best way of eliminating the risk of grass tetany in a herd. Uh, cows must be observed closely during times when grass tetany is most likely to occur. Farmers should be on the lookout for symptoms uh, after a few cloudy days and a drop in temperature. Uh, cows have magnesium added to their diets to prevent grass tetany. Uh, there's a couple of different ways of adding uh, magnesium diet. So there's a uh, mineral lick there, which is just a bucket you put in the field with magnesium in it. That's uh, about $20 for a bucket. Um, when cows are housed, then we also give calcium magnesium mixtures. Uh, it's just a bag that you pour over their feed. Uh, sh a cow should get about 200 grams a day, and these cost about $28 a bag. And then another way is magnesium bolses. Um, these can be given before springtime. Uh, the bolses release magnesium at a controlled rate for about four to six weeks, but they're quite expensive and time consuming to give to all the cows. Uh, on our farm, we give calcium and magnesium to our water system. Uh, so, treatment of grass setany. Uh, if, you, if you identify a cow with grass setany, you need to administer a, a mixture of calcium and magnesium <coughs> intravenously, which is into the vein. Uh, this is normally done in the vein in the neck, and then you just need to follow that up with. Uh, 400 mils of magnesium sulfate uh, subcutaneously, which is under the skin. Um, if you're doing this, you should do it in a few different spots and you should rub the spots after because this leads to better and faster absorption. Uh, it's very important not to put the magnesium sulfate into the vein as it could cause cardiac arrest and death. Uh, you administer both of these using a butterfly needle. So a bottle of uh, magnesium sulfate costs around $8. Uh, if you, if if we see a cow with grass tetany, we normally just call the vet because it's quite difficult to give the calcium magnesium into the vein. Um, if a cow has bad tetany, she needs to be sedated. Um, once you administer the magnesium, she sh her muscles should stop twitching. Um, when you're assessing the progress of a cow, attention should be paid to the symmetry of her head. So if her eyes are looking at different directions or one of her ears, then she more likely has brain damage and she needs to be euthanized. I just have a short video there. Days, so there's not as much magnesium taken up into the plant. It's, it's rapidly growing pasture as well. Um, maybe the magnesium stopped being supplemented by the farmer, and we suspect we've got a cow down with grass status or hypomagnesemia. 
then we reach for one of these bags. And these go under the skin. Never in the vein, always under the skin. So a couple of sites I can show you. Put uh, magnesium under the skin. Now I've got over the ribs here, trying to find a bit of loose skin to deaden the needle under. And I'll show you that, or on the neck. I try to put in a couple of sites, so then we can uh, get quick absorption. So you pick up the skin, angling the needle underneath. Snap off your bag. Attach it. Now you've got to create the space in between the skin and the body. So it takes a bit of force squeezing on the bag to get it to blow up. Make sure this needle's attached firmly and then rub it in as it goes under. So squeeze, you're filling up that, you're descending the skin there, filling it up with magnesium and then rubbing it in so it gets absorbed as well. So, yeah, as you can see, she's in a lot of uh, discomfort. And then finally, just the prognosis. So, uh, the prognosis kind of depends on when you catch the cow with tetany. Um, if the cow doesn't need to be sedated, she should normally be up in an hour if you catch her quite fast. If she does need to be sedated, it'll take her a couple of hours before she's able to stand up again. Um, you should never force the cow to stand up, she should stand up by herself. Um, unless it's caught area though, it's quite hard to cure. Um, since we started breeding jerseys though, we've had a big decline in our mineral deficiencies because they're kind of smaller, tougher animal. And it's kind of bigger cows with, that are high producing that are more susceptible to it. So, that's my sources. Okay. Questions, comments? Surely something. There we go. Yeah. For treatment, why do they rec recommend a butterfly needle? Uh, so the question is, for treatment, why do they use butterfly, butterfly needle? Uh, it's just because it's easier. The bottles are quite big. They're about 400 mils, so it's just easier to put on and just attach it down. Yeah, no, because when I think of a butterfly needle, I think of a very small needle. And so that didn't look like a small needle to me. That looked like a 16 gauge. So maybe they call butterfly needle something different than we do. But to me, a butterfly needle is 24 gauge or something. It's got a little plastic little wings, yeah. wings on them. And uh, I never would give an animal anything with that. <coughs> I use those to puncture the ear vein of a, like a big bore, and I could inject anesthetic slowly in there. But So it might be a terminology thing. But did you notice, okay, so he didn't swab or clean that area off at all either. You notice he just pushed it. And so somebody might say, well, maybe you should, you know, clean that area before you insert the needle. But if you're out working with cattle a lot, you know, they're pretty hardy. But did you notice he didn't have any restraint problems? <laughs> you know, she was just sitting there and she wasn't going to get up. But do you know, do they put, how many mills do they put in each spot? Because I know you, you said there's 400. <coughs> do you know how many mills did they do it? Two, three spots? And, you know, do you know how many? Normally we just do like half and half. So we just half like and half. half, so you're doing about 200 mills each spot. Yeah, there's always these rules of thumb. And one rule of thumb with cattle is if you do anything intramuscular, never put more than 10 cc's in a location. And you know, that's way different than what you do with a dog or cat. But I also had kind of a personal thing. I always never did try to do more than five cc's. So if I had to give somebody 10 cc's, I'd do two spots. But everything is different. And then you notice how you can't give that stuff intravascular. And so whenever you work with animals, it could be cats or dogs or cattle, always know the recommended route of administration. Because there are some things like, let's say the anesthetic we were using um, it, the anesthetic we were using was actually the same anesthetic that they use in prisons to do the le lethal injection. And I know I always had to do that IV because if you did it sub-Q, it really irritates the tissue. So you always want to make sure you're an IV and then you're getting it in the vein. There's other things that you can't, can't put in the vein. And another rule of thumb, and there might be an exception to this, but I doubt it. If something's oily, Never IV, because <coughs> somehow some of that oil wants to hang up on the valves of the heart. 
So I, does anybody know of anything that you've ever put IV that looks oily? Because uh, everything we've done, if it had oil, it would be either sub-Q or intramuscular. It would never be IV. So and then the other thing, you know, these are practical things. Um, the other thing is, whenever you inject something into any animal you're talking about, you should know what it normally looks like, the product. Like, you could see through that bag what it looked like. If somehow it doesn't look like all the things you've ever done, or this is like you're visiting someplace and something's weird, then you find out. Because I'll remember one time, these are like take-home lessons, right? Um, I went out with a veterinarian, we were doing reproduction work, and there was a young couple, and they were having trouble with their dairy cows. And we picked up a bottle of uh, like a very common uh, antibiotic. And we both looked in the bottle and there was stuff floating at the bottom. And we both knew that they had contaminated their antibiotic and it was probably bacteria growing, but they were still using the bottle because they weren't using the aseptic technique of taking material out of a bottle that's multi-use. So it goes on and on. So dairy cows, so you're, Having the jersey, did you say? Yeah, we got jersey. Are you doing crossbreds or are you going to straight bread? No, they're crossbreds. Okay, crossbred with the, the Holstein, yeah. So the bigger the cow, the more likely you get yeah. the hypomagnesium and emia. Other questions, comments? Okay, we're going to go on.